By the 1960s, passenger rail travel had been declining in the face of competition from car and air travel. Projects to modernize rail travel were implemented in different countries, including the development of high-speed trains. In 1965, the U.S. Department of Transportation began a high-speed rail project with the intention of making rail travel more competitive with other modes of inner-city transportation. Plans entailed operating high-speed trains along the northeastern corridor between Washington, D.C. and New York City. Around the same time, the Canadian National Railway was also exploring high-speed rail to modernize their service between Montreal and Toronto. Development was started by the United Aircraft Corporation, building upon design work carried out during the previous decade by the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. The design included a tilting suspension to enable it to speed through curves. One major change from the original CNO design was to switch from diesel power to gas turbines, and the train was dubbed the Turbo Train. The turbine engine selected was the Pratt & Whitney Canada ST6, which is a version of the company's PT6 aircraft engine. The engines were connected to a gearbox, which in turn drove the drive wheels, with each engine generating 400 horsepower. The trains would have two locomotives, with one at each end, and were given a sleek aircraft-like appearance, with the raised dome containing the operator's cab, and each locomotive had a front coupler to allow two or more trains to be linked together. Each locomotive had four engines, with one driving a generator for electrical power, and since the turbine engines took up less space than the originally planned diesel engines, rather than redesigning the locomotives, additional passenger seating was added to them, along with modifying the operator's cab to include a viewing area behind it. Two of the trains were built in Chicago, while the five Canadian trains were built in Montreal. Plans for the Canadian trains entailed connecting two seven-car trains to be linked into a 14-car train. The locomotives were 73 feet long, and the passenger cars were 57 feet long. For the train, Passenger accommodations were more akin to those aboard airliners, with reclining seats, folding tables on seat backs, overhead luggage racks, and meal service. U.S. operations began with test runs between Boston and Westerly, Rhode Island, and Trenton and New Brunswick, New Jersey. During a 1967 test run in New Jersey, the train reached 171 miles per hour, a world speed record for turbine-powered rail vehicles that still stands today. In January of 1968, the U.S. DOT leased the trains to the New Haven Railroad, which was in bankruptcy and was taken over the following year by the Penn Central Railroad. Penn Central operated the trains between Boston and New York City, running at a top speed of 100 miles an hour and making the 230-mile run in 3 hours and 39 minutes. Following railroad bankruptcies during this period, Amtrak was formed in 1971 to take over passenger rail service in the U.S. Turbo train service between Boston and New York continued by Amtrak and also for a short time operating the trains in other areas, for example from Washington, D.C. to Chicago. By September of 1976, Amtrak had ended passenger service of the trains and the trains were sent to the company's maintenance facility in Providence, Rhode Island, with plans to sell them either to CN or the Illinois Central Railroad. 
Sales failed to materialize, however, due to the poor condition the trains were in. In Canada, it was planned to begin passenger operations in the summer of 1967, in time for Expo 67, the 1967 World's Fair in Montreal. However, due to production delays, the trains were not ready until the following year. To give the trains more modern air, CN's advertising omitted train from the name and called it the Turbo. Despite the delays, ultimately the trains were put into service after only a year of testing, compared to the several years of testing prior to going into passenger service for most trains. The first run between Montreal and Toronto was in December of 1968, with two trains, one leaving each city simultaneously. During the run, the turbo that had left Toronto collided with a truck at a railroad crossing. No one was killed, and the damage to the train was limited to the front clamshell doors and was repaired within a week. Despite the high speeds attained in testing, the numerous railroad crossings along the route restricted them to 95 miles per hour. Problems such as brakes freezing during winter operations caused the trains to be taken out of service twice in 1969 and 1971. Railroad experts pointed out that the overall technical issues with the trains was that they were simply too advanced and built around technologies that simply hadn't been thoroughly tested prior to being put into service. The suspension of service in 1971 led to modifications of the trains, such as reconfiguring the original five seven-car trains into three nine-car trains and modifying the exhaust system to prevent dirtying of the locomotive's windows. CN began operating the reconfigured nine-car trains in late 1973, running between Toronto and Montreal and usually taking about four hours to complete the run. The trains were an hour faster than CN's other express trains. However, runs were still short of the train's 120 mile per hour design speed and the fastest average speed was about 85 miles per hour. The surplus locomotives and passenger cars left after the reconfiguration were sold to Amtrak and configured into two four-car trains. One of the trains, while making a test run in July of 1973, collided with a freight train, resulting in riding off of three of the cars. Ultimately, the surviving locomotive wasn't sold and kept as a spare until another locomotive was destroyed in a fire in September of 1975. In 1978, Via Rail took over CN's passenger service and continued to operate the turbos. One of the trains caught fire in May of 1979 and there were no injuries. However, one locomotive and two cars were destroyed. The last run of the turbo was at the end of October of 1982 and were replaced by trains using conventional diesel electric locomotives, which were also equipped with a similar tilting suspension system. Despite the problems encountered during the years the turbo trains were in service with CN and later via rail, ultimately a 97% reliability rate was achieved. One major factor leading to ending of the train's service were rising fuel costs. Ultimately, the trains were limited by maintenance issues due to their advanced technology for the time and the hoped for regular high speeds and fast travel times were never achieved due to the trains having to share the same route to slower freight locomotives, as well as the signaling systems not being equipped to handle trains traveling at high speeds. High speed rail did become more successful as technology advanced and has met with much success in countries where dedicated high speed rail lines were built, such as in Japan and France. 
As for the turbo train, no train exists today as all of them were scrapped. However, the legacy of the train lives on today as a popular subject for model rail enthusiasts. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And check out the other videos on this channel. And always remember, when the future was cool,